our first ball files were really in late 90s. I think about 97 was the first first ball file that we did. Uh, we were primarily the wastegate. Then uh, we moved on to more wastegate fitments, um, which would have been like the Turbinetics. Uh, Delta Gate was a popular fitment for the market. So we mm -hmm. decided to make the two bolt flange at that point, which is originally most people don't know, was a, um, essentially a Rotomaster application. So it came from, you know, some diesel application. But that two-bolt pattern mm -hmm. had carried through from decades before that. Um, and it was a Rotomaster that was the actual fit pattern of the two-bolt wastegate. I think that two-bolt <laughs> wastegate brought a lot of pain to a lot of people. Well, we did. So, we, again, we looked at that. Not just went, because of you guys, oh. but just in general because those things are, it, you know, it's tough when you're throwing a bunch of boost at those. The, uh, the two-bolt pattern did have some limitations. What we did in our design, which uh, to try to improve that, was we made a, a different design so that we could reinforce the bending of the flange mm -hmm. um, also in a gasket and a, a valve seat design to reduce the leakage issues that were kind of inherent in the two-bolt design. So, you know, that's that was our launch into that. was like, how can we improve the product um, from where it is? And, again, it was not faulting the previous product. It's just that's what it was, and it worked for its previous application. But when you get yeah. to performance... You know, it needed to be, it could have some improvements. Um, they were, I've seen them still work. Mm -hmm. I s still see that work, but it's crazy the difference in once you step to a we, V-band. We still, we still sell it today, believe it yeah. or not. We still sell what we call, it's called, called the F-38 today for us, but we still sell it. Now, the volumes are significantly lower than the, than obviously V-band is, is obviously dominates the market today, so. Yeah, especially the boost volume. Like that, we're trying to push through these. Well, not cars. having gaskets is a nice thing when you have a V band. Oh, so you don't great. have a metal to metal ceiling is a uh, you know beats most gaskets any day. So and so we moved. Uh, you know, we were the first to introduce. Well, I say first. I, I you don't know if that's true. Uh, early in the two thousands, we decided we we're going to do a V band waste. The V forty four. I think we introduced that in late two thousand three, two thousand four time frame. Um, seeing that, you know, the market could use a, a better fitment. Um, Still competing with basically Gretty and HKS at the time? They did not have one yet. Uh, okay. They Come out wise, they HKS came out first with a, in Japan with a V-band version. And okay. then, so they were all kind of in the 2000s, you know, thing introduced at that point in time for V-band. Where did the V-band come from? Did that come out of a different level of manufacturing? Was that used somewhere else and you guys brought it into... Uh, just other than than the the basic design, but the size and the fitment was really 100 percent ours. Uh, there was no existing design uh, in the aftermarket really mm -hmm. in the sizes that we, we produced. Now, HKS had a larger wastegate at the time. They had a 50 millimeter and later came out with a 60 millimeter. But on the smaller side, 38 millimeter, 44 millimeter, which is what most people needed at least at that point in time in the market. There was no fitment, so we created a fitment. Yeah. At that time, that size and everything. And that size and it is today the fitment that most people have like so if they're if they're if there's a competing wastegate product it's actually the same fitment as ours so we kind of generated that 38 44 millimeter mm -hmm. which are some variations in numbers today but the it, it interchanges with several of the other manufacturers who make wastegates today but when you first decided to introduce v-band mm -hmm. did you already was that obvious was it like oh there's v-bands already on like porsches and stuff uh, or was no. it like uh, in fact uh, martin no porsche didn't have anything v-band everything was flanged with bolts uh so you was, had to like kind of hunt around for this style well, we just flange. created it out of just like, v-band in general in general we, i mean so v-bands existed yeah that's but they were generally gonna... used on aircraft okay that's, that's what i was wondering where you kind of pulled yeah. that so from the basic knowledge of of v-band flanges were were called marmon design flanges which were v-band which were in in uh aircraft essentially so just reapplying that and designing it to work for okay that's yeah. cool that makes sense i was yeah. wondering because like mm -hmm. i didn't know if that was like oh you know somebody used that already in automotive and you kind of adapted that but that's cool that you ventured out of automotive to find something that was superior. again back to the two bolt was like you know it was not you know the flange design was not a good design i i you know to do what we were doing in the program so have high boost levels and yeah. gaskets right they just you did the best we could to to make it better but at the end of the day a v-band it was 360 degree clamping when you do bolts you have a space between each bolt where the gas wants to leave right mm -hmm. it's gonna it's gonna warp the flange the gasket blows out that's where it does we're in a v-band you get 360 degree clamping for us. So it's just a much better design for any kind of tube yeah. that's going to hold pressure. Well, it's obvious now also, <laughs> right. but like when you were first trying to figure all that yeah. stuff out, I'm sure it wasn't 
as we'd obvious. seen it on some race cars. So actually, okay. like you know, of the day back in the day, well, like when uh, F1. So being a big F1 fan, like uh, Honda and a bunch of other companies, and F1 had actually you know moved to V bands, and so you saw them in racing. Um, in that time frame, not in the aftermarket, but but uh, OEM mm-hmm. race teams were applying those on on like F1 cars at the time. Indy cars were uh-huh. using them. So the trickle down. Effect. So it was trickling yeah. over, over from OEM Motorsport was like, yeah, like these all have V bands on them. So I would say also seeing that in motorsport going, but nothing exists in the aftermarket. Um, mm-hmm. So that's kind of why we pushed towards the V band because it's just better performance and works better. Yeah, and the clockability, of course, is oh, yeah, you get unmatched. Better just, you know, it just there's a lot of things that are pluses for V-Band. So it's yeah. kind of a natural, I think, uh, progression to that. And V-Band. I mean, even now they're starting to get phased out in a couple different spots, I guess, when you start to see like not on wastegates mm-hmm. and blow-off valves, but like on putting my turbo kit together isn't as V-banded because they're so stiff. So yep. now you can kind of switch to like a Vangin style clamp or something, but even on all turbo applications, they're still Love and V bands. Uh, yes, uh, there's a few areas where it's a little difficult to apply, like undivided housings for like uh, turbo mm-hmm. flanges, right? So if you're gonna have a, a you know, popper fit, but like a T4 V band, it not V band, but it's a uh, yeah, the T4. flanged. Um, it's hard to do a V band flange in a divided inlet on a turbo housing. Can do it, but it's 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 a hard to apply. So that's tough in itself. Mm-hmm. The T4 flanges because they're yeah. inevitably as tight as can be to try to get things <laughs> yeah. together and it's heavy yeah. so it's it like, carries over so for some of the problem with it is is that it was a carryover design for many many years before so then you keep trying to work around that fitment to make it better but it's still at the end of the day there's always that when you're trying to put the turbo on the car there's one bolt you can't get to right mm-hmm. it's always like uh, i gotta have a special ground wrench to get to that bolt on the third on the fourth bolt three tighten four there's a pain and everybody <laughs> hates the change but I'm sure right. these companies could do so much better if we were just like, okay, just make the change. Just do it. Guys, thank you for tuning in to the Bogetti Clips YouTube channel. For the full podcast, check us out on Bogetti Studios YouTube and all your audio platforms. Also, hit that subscribe button to not miss out on any of the new Bogetti Clips coming up.